and folks, head on over to the front page of TFNN. We're going to talk to our man Teddy Kegstat right now. We always talk to Teddy on Wednesdays at 40 past the hour, but we got a privilege. We're talking to him on Monday this week as well. We'll talk to him Wednesday as well. We're talking to him, folks, because today is the last day that you can sign up and save 25% for the Tiger Forex report on the front page of TFNN, folks. You head on over, you click that button. The important part when you subscribe, folks, just enter code. I'm going to show you real quick before we talk to Teddy. Enter code TEDDY25 right in the promo code slot there. You hit add the code. That's 25% off, folks. It brings you down to 72.75. I believe, check my math, I think that's right. You save 24 bucks and a quarter every month, folks. 25% off, and that stays with you forever. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if it's not something you're trading with, it's not something you have the time for, you don't like it for any reason, you get a money-back guarantee if you cancel, and best case is you stay on and you lock that in forever, folks. You're saving more than $24 every month for the life of your subscription. And Teddy, it's an interesting one. Before we get into the market, though, I got to know, how was Lollapalooza, man? Oh, it was, it was amazing, man. Metallic was only supposed to play for an hour and a half, and they put on a full two-hour show. It was I insane. It. Yeah, I was so was. jealous, man. I was emailing Teddy on Friday, folks. He said, my weekend starts in two hours, man. I'm going to Lollapalooza. I said, oh, I got to get to a live show again <laughs> soon, man. That, that's like my favorite thing to do in life. I was jealous. That's great. You had a great time, man. Uh, okay, and we jump right into it, man. So uh, where do you want to kick things off? We got some action in the dollar. We got some action in crude in a big way. What are you looking at on Monday? It's great we talked to you on Monday, man, because we usually talk to you on Wednesday. So maybe you can walk us through you know, how you start in the week and what you're looking at. Um, well, this is a good Monday to talk about because we had both a weekly close, a monthly close, and a daily close on Friday. You know, So um, especially, remember, on Wednesday, anyone that watched uh, when we were talking last week, I mentioned how technically – the yen was actually setting up for a sell. Boy, did it really ever sell off, you know? So, um, and then you have this whole take as far as the bonds as well. You know, we talked about this head and shoulders pattern on the daily basis that, you know, I mean, with this wishy-washy Fed speak that's going on and saying how you have to follow, the, they're going to follow the data. Well, shouldn't you always be following the data? <laughs> like, isn't that yeah. exactly what your job is? You know, so if, what, what does that mean? During other periods, you're having periods of introspection or something? I mean, I, I don't know what that means at all. You know, so the market rates, the fact that it's being pumped up the way it is right now, it's it's we have a divergence as far as the fun, what's going on fundamentally. You have a Fed that says we're still going to raise rates, but watch the data, and but somehow we're getting you know higher bond pricing, you know, and that's definitely a reflection of what's going on in the dollar. But then you can also see where the extremes are. Like the yen sold off really big over the past yeah. um, few sessions. Okay, so did the, the uh, Swiss. If you notice how the euro rallied versus the pound. The pound is rallying pretty strong. The euro has only had a 50% correction from its last swing high to the past swing low of a couple um, sessions back. Okay, so that's showing how where the strength really is in these other currencies. And I think that as if if the dollar still is under pressure, you're going to see a more accelerated move in say the pound and the yen and the Swiss. But the euro, you're not going to see as much of that, you know. And the same thing with the Aussie and the New Zealand, you know. So I think it's going to be interesting to, to watch the bonds because if, if this is just a market correction in the dollar and in the interest rate sector and even in the crude oil market, we should be coming into a bottoming area, you know, or a topping area in the bonds. So if we're going to push this, you know, either we're going to have one more leg and really hit the extreme or we're talking about a change in trend that could last a couple of months. I mean, if you look at the, the bonds themselves and the 10 year put on a monthly buy signal, you know, so now remember it's a monthly basis. So that doesn't mean you can't have a correction off of that move, you know, but that's that right. could also mean that we, we, if that's true, then we're going to have a, a higher trending market for bond prices for the next like three to six months. That is, doesn't make sense when you have a Fed that's so, supposed to be leaning on at least a half a point three more times before the year is out you know yeah. so um so that's there's that that's a very big question on what's going on right now so i think people have to really keep those in their in their in their uh back you know in the background and what they're trading when it comes to the different currency crosses yeah it's pretty cool i mean the move in the the note in the bond market i had a, i got the 30 year up here on a monthly going back to on think or swim it goes back to 96 i think and really the run mm -hmm. higher looks like it started in 99 right um, and mm -hmm. we're just literally almost still sitting at that trend line, got a little below it, but a bounce as mm -hmm. traders doesn't seem too outlandish when basically we were just trading in the 30 year, the numbers in the 30 year are just bonkers, man. We were at yeah. 191 
in March of 2020 when you got that acceleration, even if you just take where we were at the end of 2020, we're at about 174, 170, something like that, and we're at 144 still. Um, mm -hmm. So the moves have just been remarkable where maybe we do get some bounces within a trend, but some of these bounces, the trend is just so large that maybe those right. bounces are a little bit larger than Absolutely. we're used to with the Absolutely. trend intact, right? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, crude. Crude is moving a lot this morning, man. What's your take on the market in crude? We're coming down to another critical area, catching a little bit of a bounce in the last few minutes. We just had a 92 handle. Now we got a 94 handle. Uh, mm -hmm. What's your action on crude? Even this morning, uh, down down decent. I know it's under pressure it's right now. I think it's just a little bear trap. I think it's, it's testing support, but it's basing. I still am bullish on crude. I don't see that it's not going to you know, skip back. I, th I could see crude easily get back above 105 to 110 in a, in a heartbeat, you know, so I'm not comfortable at these levels. I'd be, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'd be very cautious trying to sell the crude oil market right now. I would, in fact, I wouldn't even take a short trade in the market at all. Unless As a technical trader myself, I agree, you know, it's pretty much at a pretty critical area in this area, you know, you can pick whew, 10, 15 areas on this chart, basically, that you could have bought at this area and it's bounced mm -hmm. or held um, going back to almost the better part of this year. Man, and, and, and the bonds and the 10-year are influencing crude too. Sure. You realize that as interest rates, remember we talked about this months ago about how, what was helping to drive the crude prices. If the Fed raises rates, the cost of carryover for crude goes up. So right now the market rate, even though the Fed just raised three quarters of a point, the market rate has actually gone down. So that means the price, the cost of carryover for, and you got to realize we're coming in, you know, there's always rollovers in the oil market, you know, in the spot prices and, like, and stuff like that. So every month, that's a big reflection because as that comes off every month, that's gone. Now you have a new interest rate. Well, financing for oil right now is cheaper now than it was two, three months ago, you know. That's a great take, so, man. You know, so that's why I think you're getting this suppression in crude price. It's artificially being suppressed because the cost of carryover is being decreased, you know. So, I mean, that's it's just like the cost of gasoline locally. I mean, the, if the federal, you know, uh, taxes reduce plus also certain state taxes, okay, the price of gas has come down, but that's only because you're not paying the taxes. The plastic price of gas didn't come down. The taxes were removed, you know. So that's where that pricing, and I think I'm looking at it in that same perspective. It's a great point. I mean, the, the the cost of capital, right? The interest rate. I mean, we mm -hmm. talk about it. My dad always says in the show, it's like, what can you buy, right? And and that translates to everything, man. Even companies themselves. Apple's got a four-part bond sale out there today um, mm -hmm. because interest rates are low enough that they can push out that paper, man, um, and use that capital as opposed to the $180 billion in cash they got on their books. So, mm -hmm. so the Fed, back to the Fed real quick because you made some great points, man, and I completely agree. Yeah. They should be data dependent. I think what... You know, the market's taking all the optimism there, and we got like 20 seconds, Teddy. You know what? Mm -hmm. Maybe we can bring you back, all right? Do you, have, do you sure. got a few minutes? Perfect. Okay, Let's I, can, jump I can do it, yeah. Let's jump into the break, man, because I want to get – because we get the jobs number on Friday. We get CPI next yeah, we week, do. and if it's data-dependent, let's have a little conversation about those two numbers. Folks, mm -hmm. head on over to the front page while we're on break for three minutes. Check out the Tiger Forex report. Teddy's got a new issue out this morning, and we'll be right back to finish up the show. Welcome back, folks. And we got markets picking up in August, right where we left off in July. You got the NASDAQ 100 climbing a solid 150 points from the lows we got just in the last half hour. We're above 13,000. You're positive by 32 points right now. And the S&P's trying to make it right now. S&P's negative by just seven points after being lower by about 35. Uh, so, Teddy, talking about the fundamental news, we get jobs numbers on Friday. We get the CPI next week. The Fed said they're data dependent. Um, what are you looking for? Because I've been talking about maybe we see, you know, those they just become so important if the Fed is as they should be data dependent. It's all up in the air. Uh, what are you looking for for those numbers, whether it's jobs and then CPI next week and how that might shape the, the movement in these in these markets? The numbers. I mean, this is something we've been talking about for almost a year where I said as we move forward now, the, the, the main economic numbers are the biggest thing to watch now for the whole economy and all the markets you trade. Without a doubt, jobless claims and unemployment. And it was funny over the weekend I was listening to some of the shows and I love to speak how especially those who are 
basically following the government being, don't worry, they're, they know what they're doing, everyone's panicking, whatever, um, saying, you know, well, yeah, well, now we know we're in a recession. Well, we've all known, we, everyone knows we've been in a recession for more than two months. You didn't need the data for that, you know? So, but the one thing I think you have to watch is definitely unemployment claims and unemployment, because they were saying how, well, we're at record at low unemployment. Well, okay, that's what we are right now, but the question is how long can unemployment stay as stable as it is with a contracting economy with high inflation like this? Layoffs have already started. You've already seen it in the financial sector over the past two months where Chase and a whole bunch of other ban um, places started already getting rid of people from their lending departments and all sure. kinds of banking sectors. So if you're doing it in white collar jobs, when, what happens when it starts trickling down into the other sectors of the economy? It's yeah. going to start to that ripple effect will be big. Now, I don't think it's going to be a big uptick yet, and it may not even have an uptick this month. But I think unemployment over the next two to three months for sure is going to start to go up, you know, on, especially on claims. And also, also the CPI, it's going higher. Inflation is here. Oof. CPI goes higher. Watch out, folks. And the right. jobs, yeah, Amazon. Amazon lost 99,000 workers last quarter, man. Right. Teddy, thank you so much, man. We look forward to talking to you on Wednesday. Sounds good. I do, too. All right.